Okay, now I want to start chapter 7 <coughs> and give you some information about the Z transformation. Z transformation is a toolbox. I don't want to have uh, to give in systematically completely a lecture uh, about Z transformation, just an introduction, and I want to show you only that features uh, we can useful need uh, usefully need in uh, control system uh, theory. So um, yeah, I want to start with um, the general general algorithm. Let's write down a general algorithm. Start with general algorithm of a digital filter filter or controller. I have mentioned that it is absolutely same hardware, same software. If you have a filter or um, a controller, the purpose is different. The function is the same. Okay, we have an output signal at actual time point N. N we want to calculate and in general a recursive filter uh, works with old outputs. Uh, and old outputs could have also um, <coughs> coefficients. Here uh, the letter of coefficients for old outputs is um, normally uh, p. Uh, p1 is the coefficient for the output one step before plus and then there could also be old elder outputs uh, mostly in a filter with a degree n and uh, n times uh, coefficient p times uh, say m sorry m n is, is my running index and m uh, should be the um, degree of my filter n minus m okay that is the recursive part and now the uh, <coughs> input part comes is q0 times x d of n plus q1 times x d of n minus 1 and so on down to q m times x d n minus m. So <coughs> why uh, y n minus m uh, goes uh, is the output m steps before that is the actual in this time where this algorithm is uh, executed is the actual control difference um, this is a control difference one step before and this is a control difference m steps before okay uh, now uh, z transformation is uh, f frec uh, a frequency function so I have to convert via Laplace transformation into frequency domain. So this is my symbol to do this. And um, yeah, <coughs> uh, I just call this now a new function, unknown but new function y of p. It's a complex frequency p. Uh, now I convert an equation via Laplace into the frequency domain. Uh, Laplace transformation is linear, so I can now convert uh, each part of the sum individually and then add the result. That is the um, way I want to use here. The, the linearity of the Laplace transformation is useful. Uh, the linearity leads to the effect that a coefficient, a constant coefficient in, in time, also gives the same constant coefficient in frequency domain. Uh, y n minus 1 now is similar function like this but this is shifted uh, so I can write with the shifting theorem of Laplace uh, this is original still unknown y of p multiplied with the shifting operator e to the power of minus p sampling time yeah? we uh, assume that this algorithm is executed each sampling time. Okay, we can go on plus the next expression 
or up to the last expression. This <coughs> can be written as PM, same coefficient, times y of p, original function, but now shifted m steps to the <coughs> uh, to the past. Yeah, times m plus, and now I do the same with the uh, input signal. Uh, I have the same coefficient, and the uh, xdn is a series of points. We can convert this into a frequency function, uh, and can call this frequency function xd of p. We don't know the size and the shape and the equation for this. We call the unknown frequency function of xd of n called xd of p. But then we can write yeah, q1 times xd of p times shifting operator e to the power of minus p times sampling time plus and so on uh, going down with finally x d of p times e to the power of minus p t0 times m. Okay, so far what can we do now? Um, the idea is you see in a digital system uh, we have now uh, very often the expression the shifting operator e to the power of minus p t0. Uh, here is the same shifting operator but uh, in the the, expo in the exponent we have a multiplication with m but of course we can extract this e to the power of minus p t0 and the idea of the z transformation is very simple. We make a um, replacement, a replacement, and call this new function z. Uh, forget, don't forget that p is a complex frequency. e to the power of p is also a complex um, number, complex value. So the replacement e to the power of minus p t0 is um, also a complex number. And this is called e. e to the power of pt0 is replaced. Um, this replacement is rather old. I think 40, 50, 70, 100 years. I don't know exactly how long this is. And you have to know that uh, this is a replacement by a mathematical scientist. Uh, an engineer uh, would have replaced with a negative sign. Yeah? Now we have to live thousand of years with this replacement because this is common, well known. Uh, for my opinion, uh, the guy who has replaced this uh, was crazy. Why not replace also including the minus sign? But we cannot change it. All books use this replacement. So we have to write always z with negative exponents. Uh, now the um, y of p is not anymore a y of the complex frequency p, but this same unknown function y of p can now be written as y of z. Um, at this time we uh, don't care about what this for a type of functions is, we uh, just need a name, and the name is y of z. You will see uh, what I want to show uh, doesn't need uh, the, ex uh, yeah, the exact function y of z. That's just a, a name. Okay, now I write the same equation now with the replacement z. And I get y of z is uh, p1 uh, y of z times, and now this is the replacement z, but now with a negative exponent. So z to the power of minus 1. Plus, and so on, plus last element of the recursive part is index p, <coughs> index n, p sub n, uh, times y of z, uh, times z, but now to the power of minus n. Plus, and now we can write the uh, input part of this equation, xd of p, of course, then it can be written as, as xd of z uh, without any uh, z function plus q1 xd of z times uh, z to the power of minus 1 
plus and so on all terms down to uh, sorry i have forgotten the qm qm yeah sorry plus qm times uh, x d of z times z to the power of minus m um, note it is common to have the same numbers of p's now q is one more uh, normally we have the same uh, exponent uh, the uh, final in the past in the um, recursive form and also in the uh, input form um, doesn't matter if the uh, recursive and input form have different uh, values then just the coefficients are set to can be set to zero okay why uh, this is useful for us i want to show you why because i want to define uh, now a, a transfer function of a digital filter define now a transfer function of digital filters or controllers um, similar to the that what we do in the um, analog area now we want to have a digital transfer function f of z which is a ratio of um, output values um, ratio of output function y of z divided by x input function yeah remember this is in analog filter uh, very the same but the, here uh, the f of p in analog filter is output of p divided by input of p so this is has the same shape the same meaning that is it's a filter function yeah the filter function of a digital filter and now look what happens if we do this in our uh, equation we have to separate y and xd for this uh, i make an intermediate step so please uh, wait for an intermediate step and then i fill uh, the uh, rest behind this equation uh, i bring i uh, move all parts with a y of z to the left side of this equation and extract y of z getting y of z is one it's the one of this element minus p1 y of z is extracted times z to the power of minus one minus and so on minus p m times z to the power of minus m parenthesis is closed uh, on the rest on the uh, right side you see each element contains uh, an xd of z so i extract an xd of z and the rest of the extraction is q0 times 1 plus q1 times z to the power of minus 1 plus and so on down to q m z to the power of minus m parenthesis closed here you can see <coughs> if i want to have the ratio of y divided by xd here's y i divide by xd this equation both sides with xd then this is f and i have to divide with the quantity on the left side so finally i get an in division line in the numerator we uh, find the uh, elements here in the parentheses on the right side q0 plus q1 z to the power of minus one plus and so on plus q m z to the power of minus m and in the denominator we have one minus p1 z to the power of minus one minus down to plus p m z to the power of minus m 
this is the definition, very important definition oops, of the transfer function of a digital filter. Um, compare, compare with analog uh, transfer function in um, digital in control system one I have uh, converted I think I should show this I have converted a uh, differential equation an analog differential equation into a transfer function via Laplace transformation and this looks very similar uh, so I think I get a copy of this and put it here yeah I have uh, copied something into uh, here my paper a look in um, the PDF file RT script reversion for US version complete this you can find in the uh, course if not tell me then this should uh, can be found on page 29. Uh, you see here um, a linear differential equation of a physical system. Now with differential quotients, X, uh, O is the output, uh, this is the input, in our case this is Y and this is XD, uh, with coefficients A and B on the right and left side. Uh, then this is converted via Laplace transformation in this expression and with the same steps I uh, get a transfer function of an analog filter like this, a polynomial function with p in the numerator divided by a polynomial function uh, with <coughs> also with p in the denominator. Uh, this looks very similar to uh, this function. Uh, only the letters are different and the, the parameter is here z and here is the parameter p and the coefficients here are negative, here are positive. Uh, but the, the uh, idea is the same. Uh, now, a very important um, difference we can show. Uh, normally, a difference equation uh, contains these coefficients a's and b's. They cannot directly be measured. Uh, also, if you have the a's and b's, you cannot realize the filter very quickly if you know only the a's and b's and you have to uh, go with very complicated steps and design programs and so on to get an analog filter with known a's and b's so it's not easy to design a filter if you know the a's and b's in digital filter function you see it is absolutely very simple to realize a digital filter if you know the coefficients uh, Q and P, if you know these coefficients, uh, then if you go step back, backwards uh, in these steps, you can convert a transfer function directly back into the algorithm. And the algorithm can easily be programmed with some lines of C or any other computer language. Yeah, so if you have the FFC, realization is simple. In analog case, if you have the a's and b's here, the uh, realization is rather complicated. So, a uh, main difference is realization of digital filter, if you know the mathematical functions, is easy. And that is that what I want to show you. We want, of course, to calculate some q's and p's with other methods, with mathematical methods, uh, of, uh, more uh, other controllers which have better properties. Uh, so we, uh, I will show you some methods where you get the Q's and P's of a new controller and to program it just go backwards write down the algorithm here and then this is yeah finally uh, one line of C. Uh, I have uh, seen in my uh, papers that I have forgotten to show you how to program um, digital algorithms. So I should add this uh, and make here some some notes. Yeah, uh, we 
parallelization of analog filter if a i and b i unknown is difficult and complicated realization of digital filter is ex extremely I say extremely easy um, look in the realization a quick look quick look of the PID code see paper uh, page let's look page 22 uh, if I um, put my um, so you see a little bit small but um, I think this this is a um, copy of page oh forgotten. Uh, in, in in my paper you see the um what is this? No 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 uh, page twenty two oh, da steht's, yeah. page twenty two um here you see um this is a um function which can be called each sampling time. Yeah you need a timer or any uh, procedure which can produce um yeah, constant calls for this algorithm. You need some variables. Uh, these variables uh, are double var double precision in this case. It is C or C sharp, doesn't matter. Uh, you need some storages, variables where you can store old values. Uh, then you need an initialization. I call this function init. You have to call this init. Um, one time before you start your real-time program this init uh, is necessary because in the first call uh, you have to be sure that these uh, variables contains the value zero so in this uh, code you define a local variable uh, xt0 that's the actual control difference and here you see an input function and output function <coughs> these functions Call the ADC and store values to the DAC. Here the uh, control difference is calculated. XRTC is measured and W contains the desired value. Yeah? Desired value. Of course, then in, in your program, uh, you should uh, calculate or you define the desired value. If you have a unit step function, then w is uh, simply 1. Uh, so this is the actual control difference. Now you calculate. This is a line of my PID algorithm. You see just one line in C. Y is Y old. The, the value one step before. This is Q0 times actual input. Just calculated. Minus Q1 times x the old one plus uh, q0 q2 times x the old 2 so x the old 2 is contains the value of the x the 0 two steps before um, and here this last line is just the actualization of the variables look y old it gets a value of y so for the next step this is the old value and y is a new value x old 2 gets a value of x the uh, old 1 and x old 1 gets a value of x t 0 so here this is a kind of shift register where you uh, actualize the uh, storages the content of these variables and that's all yeah so this is just a digital pid algorithm uh, 
running under C, or we can program this, of course, in any other uh, computer language. Uh, the principle is the same. And if you have now a general filter, then uh, of course this could uh, th these uh, numbers of p's and q's could be larger, but the principle is the same. Then just uh, this line is a little bit longer, and we have you need more variables here. So far, you see if you know uh, FFC, you can program it quickly. Yeah, uh, that's it. Um, if we know the QI and PI programming is simple. Okay.